Breaking news. Tinubu visits Aerofi to commemorate with him on what has happened in his state, especially the Abuja train and everything that has gone on. And wanted to use it as a quick position, you know, take advantage of the situation and just politicalize it and say, I hope with the 50 million I've donated to your state and to the victims, and um, voting for me, it's now um, part of what will happen. Guess what Erufai told him? Erufai uh, dished Tinubu, uh, and uh, this is what is making real serious, you know, comment out there. People are wondering, wow. Remember that Erufai, a few weeks back, told Nigerians that if Buhari will, if Buhari's consensus candidate is Rutimi Amechi, he's happy with being Rutimi Amechi's uh, vice president. Yes? Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like us, share, subscribe. Let's get all the details. 2023, Aero 5 failed to endorse Tinubu as he visits Kaduna, gives strong advice to Jigaban. <laughs> That's what he did for him. The national leader of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, visited Kaduna State to condole the governor over the attack on the Abuja Kaduna train on Monday, March the 28th. Erufai received Tinubu, commended him for honoring the victims of the ill fate train by cancelling his 70th birthday. However, the governor, like what has become the norm with every presidential aspirant visit, failed to endorse Tinubu's ambition to run for number, Nigeria's number one seat. The governor of Kaduna State, Erufai, on Tuesday, on Tuesday, April the 5th, said that Nigeria is at a crossroad with the multifaceted challenges facing the country at the moment. Daily Trust report that the governor, while receiving the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Ashiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinobu, who has visited the state to condole Erufai on the terrorist attack on the Kaduna bound train on Monday, March the 28th. Erufai speaks to Tinubu with regards to the presidential ambition after the national, the APC leader donated 50 million to the victims of the Kaduna train, applauding Tinubu for cancelling his birthday in honor of the victims. Erufai failed to still endorse the APC national leader. He gently this gesture of Ashiwaju is a show of powerful leadership, empathy, and concern for the lives and properties of Nigerians. It is unprecedented in our history that someone will be so concerned about others when other leaders failed. That's Erufai edging out uh, Buhari when other leaders failed. Remember, Buhari has not visited the people. Uh, and that's Erufai, you know, telling, <laughs> telling Buhari, sending message to Buhari to understand it. The governor, the government and the people of Kaduna State will never forget this, your kind gesture. We're very grateful to you for your service, sacrifice and commitment to the unity that makes us a country. The governor said this why he awarded Tinubu and he, he awarded Tinubu with applause and thank him very much for visiting. He said the letter knows very well that God will be the one to choose the best leader for Nigeria. And so we hopefully and we wait on God to choose the best person. The Punch report that the governor appreciated Tinubu for calling and for contributing to the rehabilitation of the victims, however, told him that God will choose the best for Nigeria. So that's Erufai. You know, Erufai is also eyeing to become uh, a vice president because a few, like I said, a few weeks back, he was the one who told Nigerians that, ah, may, may God, God will pick the best person, you know. No, the few weeks back, he told Nigerians that, ah, um, uh, Buhari has already, if uh, Buhari chooses um, Rotimi Amechi as his presidential, uh, anointed presidential candidate, he is quite happy to be the vice president to, you know, Amechi if Buhari called on him. He said because he did not prepare to become Nigerian's president, he was just happy, you know, uh, uh, you know, he did not prepare to become the governor of his state. Buhari called on him and told him he, he has to be the, the governor of his state. And um, 
he had to obey Buhari. That's why he became the governor of Kaduna. And so he said, if Buhari calls on him again to, you know, to serve in that capacity to become um, Nigerian's vice president, who is he to say no? That was what he said a few weeks back before we saw the whole thing, you know, metamorphose into what it is today. But the, but the sad thing there is that we are all not paying attention to the fact that Erufai carefully knows what is going on. His words, not mine. He said, you know, he told, he warned the management train that they should not carry people and they should not move at night because of the information he's gotten with regards to what was going on. That was what he said. That's his own words, not mine. He said he told them, he's warned them before that, you know, they should not uh, bother to, you know, move at night, that there was a, uh, you know, he had intelligent reports. That's his exact words. There was intelligent report that there could be potential attack, that these guys were planning an attack on the train. Now, my, 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 my own there is, so who gave you this information and how did the person know? Because when he was lamenting on what has happened, the first thing that came out of his mouth was Nigerian military is failing to tackle this. That's his words. Nigerian military is failing to tackle this insecurity. He said because they know where these people are. They know. They know where they are. They have their phone number. That's Erufai speaking. He said they know where they are. They have their phone numbers. And they refuse to do anything. So could it be this is part of the Islamization agenda? Because if you know those that are committing it, because when they go to Imo State, uh -huh, you don't want to know what they do there. If you see the way they treat other people, you will weep for the soul of this nation. You will weep. And these people, I can tell you, is not because they've stolen, not because they killed anybody, not because they committed one crime, atrocity or the other. I'll tell you their crime. They committed one crime, though. The crime is they feel marginalized and they say, you know what? If you don't want us as part of the government, we want out. That's the crime. That's it there. That's the crime the people have committed. And they treat them with so much disdain as though they are common criminals. They treat them as though they've done something, you know, abominable. And when you begin to think of it, you will wonder what exactly is the crime of these people. You will wonder to yourself. You will wonder. So leave us a comment. We'll love to hear from you. We will love to really hear from you. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like us, share, subscribe. God bless. Have a good day. Bye for now.